It's time for change. It's time for change. And if we want to change this year 2018 in a new way, we have to know that God's will for you is to be changed, is to be renewed, is to be, in Bible words, transformed. Transformed. So the Bible tells us today in Romans chapter 12, um, if let me read the New King James Version, say, I beseech you, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as, as living sacrifices, wholly acceptable to God, which each your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, we know that chapter 12 of Romans have one key word, and that key word is transformation. This key word have meanings. The meaning of renovation and the meaning of change. Change from the current state, renovation from the current state to the future state. So that's what it means, transformation. You know that the word transformation has an illustration for this caterpillar that have begun its life in a form that looks no probably beauty or acceptable or nice to see, but its end is beautiful. It's end after the process of being the cocoon, after the process to change from inside to outside, becomes a beautiful butterfly that is praised and worshipped by nature and many people in this world. So, God is the only person that can give you a whole new life, a new body, a new mind, a new heart. My question is, are you willing to be renewed? Are you willing to be transformed? Are you willing to enter this year 2018 Kakum? And through faith, knowing that at the end of this year, you're going to be a different person. You won't be the same after tasting faith that comes from the Word of God. So, we want you to be changed. I want to be changed. I don't want to be the same pastor I was the last year, 2017. Uh, I want to be a new pastor. A pastor that always have open mind, renew it for more of God's word, for more of God's teaching, for more of God's blessing, for more of God's uh, um, wisdom to lead you in a way, in a new way that you can also be blessed. Yes, I'm so excited. This year, 2018, I trust and I believe God has so many wonderful things for my life, for you, and for this ministry as well. So let's run this marathon of faith with faith and with enthusiasm. Now let me share with you some principles of change. If you want to renew your life, if you want to change this year 2018, your routine, all this habit that you know that in some way are leading you in a lazy status, or just keeping you the status quo all your life, knowing that God's will is for you to be changed, to be transformed, you have to know what the Bible principles are for you to be changed. And the scripture tells us in chapter 12 of Romans that we have to dedicate this year, 2018, we have to concentrate in what we are going to do and also evaluate, cooperate, and affirm and motivate ourselves to keep changing, to keep going, to keep running, to keep have victory in every day of our life through faith this year, 2018. Why dedication? Because, yes, we start from our body, from the physical things that we have, our body to be dedicated to God, as an offering, as a sacrifice to the Lord. So that's not easy. That requires some kind of willing. You cannot dedicate your life and your body automatically. It comes from a decision from you. So you have to concentrate to renew your mind and to will, to decide to give your life for God. And after you do that, then yes, you're going to evaluate how much are you giving to the Lord. How much are you changing? How much are you being transforming? So you have to assess your, your current state every day, every month. Okay, what months have passed this year, 2018? So what, what we have been so far from January 1st to today? Have you evaluated what you have done the first month of January of this year? What have changed? What is new in your life? If you can give me your testimony for, for three minutes, do you have something to share that God has done in your life this year, 2018? I can tell you many things. I, mean, I will spend the whole day just sharing what I'm doing these days. Something new. But what about you? 
Do you have that testimony? And of course, if we want to also assess our current state, we need help. We need cooperation. We need support. We cannot do it by ourselves. That's why we have a church. That's why God has a body. The body of Christ is a church. And it's an organism. It's a cooperative body. With members are integrating, are related to each other, connected to each other, to support each other. That's the will of God. That you become member of a body. Member of this church. So you can cooperate and love each other and renew yourself by serving others. If you want to really be a new person this year, 2018, you have to start to serve others. Don't be selfish. Don't just focus on yourself. Don't just come to, to learn more English here or to receive blessing from this message. But serve. Serve others. Then you will see how God wants to transform your life into a new person. Then we have to affirm. Confess. Because confessing gives us power. The Bible says if you confess your sins, God will forgive you. That's, that's one kind of confession. But the other kind of confession is to say, yes, God is powerful. I am his child. I am a soldier of Christ. I'm, I, and I'm ambassador of the kingdom of heaven. So whatever you confess with your mouth, be living in your house, in your heart, God will bless it. Because it's true faith that you are confessing. You are affirming what you are doing, what you are in Christ. And that will give you motivation. Because if you know who you are, if you know what you are doing in this world, and you are not just wasting time, wasting space, and consuming air in this planet air, then you have a motivation to live. You have a vision. You have a purpose for living. And you know that what you are doing here is not wasting time. You are here to invest your time to motivate you for a new week, for a new challenge that you have in this year, 2018. So these are very common principles that we can get from this chapter 12 of the book of Romans. Now let me just share a little of this deeply. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, once again, the NIV version, Therefore I urge you, brother, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Now, worship is not just come to church and sing some praises and, and songs and listen to a sermon. That's not worship. What is one of the worship that we do to God? Well, actually, worship is giving the worst that God deserves back to Him. So everything that we give the glory to God is another worship. When you are in your home, when you are cooking, when you are cleaning, when you are studying, when you are working, when you are meeting a friend, when you are just riding a bus, riding a, tra a train, or even to another country in the airplane, whatever you do, that's an act of worship. So remember that you are physically in the presence of God. Why? Because God is everywhere. God is omnipresent. And if God is omnipresent, wherever you are, by faith, God is there with you. Amen? So, you can have an act of worship in every circumstances where, and every place where your body is. So that's why. Everything that you start, you start physically because your body affects your behaviors. If you feel tired today, and you wake up tired today, that is Sunday, how your behavior will be today? You will going to show me a lazy motion. You're going to show me a tired face, probably depressed, worthy of pity. And what we have to show to you my compassion. Yes, he is tired. Yes, she is tired. I cannot challenge him or her for more because you look so tired. Even though you don't tell me, Pastor, I'm tired today. I know because I see your face. I know because I, I see the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you act. So your behavior shows the condition of your body. And if your body feels tired, overwhelmed, then... You look to me that you want to stop your run or give away your run. Remember when I, when I told you the first Sunday of January this year in this Marathon of Faith, don't stop and don't quit? Yes. Our body will show if at this point of this year, 2018, we are ready to quit or we are ready to continue the next track. Your muscles also affects your moves and motivations. The way you talk, the way you walk, the way you... Even shake your hands. Sometimes when people greet you, they shake hands. And some people, they shake hands very firm, strongly. Now you can see the character of that person in the way they greet him. If a person is weak or have some complex of inferiority or doesn't have confidence in himself, the way that they shake their hands is an open door for people to imagine or speculate 
What kind of life do you have? Or what kind of character? Or what kind of personality do you have? And then you will be vulnerable for bullying, for attacking, for persecution, for criticism, just because your emotions, your muscles, is exposing the condition of your spiritual and your faith in, from other people. Your psychology also affects your physiology. Oh, sorry, your physiology affects your psychology. If our physical body is healthy and strong, our mind and our, our enthusiasm is different. But when our body is out of work, is not in shape, then our mentality also is, is getting uh, a challenge that it shouldn't have. So if we start with our body, what we have to continue? We have to continue with our mind. Because mind, our mind is part of our body. And verse 2 says, Do not conform any longer to the part of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, says the Bible. Now, the Amplified Version of the Bible gives us another insight. Look at what the Amplified Version said. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, that, and beg of you in the view of all mercies of God, to make a decisive dedication of your body, presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship about such things. Should I have explained more? It's clear, right? It's clear that if we want to present our body, we want to dedicate all the members and faculties that we have physically, of course, our intelligent, our rational way of thinking must be consecrated as well. And that's why we have to renew our mind this year, 2018. Next week, I'm going to talk about how uh, is this related to our increasing our faith. But just keep in mind that you have to decide to renew your mind, to renew the way you think, and how we can do that. As you are starting this year, 2018, you have to reboot your mind, as, as a computer term is, start thinking what is good. Because the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, finally, brothers and sisters, says the Apostle Paul, whatever is true, whatever is novel, whatever is right, whatever is poor, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, anything of, in, of excellence or praiseworthy, think about such a thing. Set your mind to see something positive, yes, that's good, but to see something that is praiseworthy and excellent is another thing. Many people have positive thinking, that's good. But God wants us to be beyond that, to think some things that are excellent, not just positive thinking. Things that are praiseworthy, to, that give the glory to God, that renew and dedicate us to be more holy. Six of such a sin, says the Apostle Paul. What are these? Things that are novel. Things that are in, in, in the light of God's word. Things that are lovely, because God is love. And things that are admirable, because everything that God put in our mind is amazing. It's amazing how God opened the scripture, opened our minds through them, and give us more wisdom. So start with thinking the way that God thinks. Do not conform any longer, says the Bible. Why? Because if we do not conform, it means that we don't copy someone else. We are not cloning each other. You are not a clone to someone else. Don't try to be someone else. When you set your mind, you can imitate a person, but doesn't mean that you're going to be like that person. And we imitate Christ, as the Apostle Paul was imitating the Christ, and he said, imitated me in the scripture. No, any longer, because we don't have to keep our bad habits. Remember that we are in a new, new year. So, you have to say goodbye to those bad habits that you carried the last year, and say, okay, this is a new year, and I have a new set, a new goal in my mind, and I'm going to give out all this bad habit to put in my body, in my mind, new habits, who will give me more ideas, and who's going to love me up for the glory of God. So, don't try to be another person. Be yourself. But yes, put more new ideas in your mind. And try to add according to the mode and the way that God is teaching you through the world. 
also in the world they are good mothers and good parents but yes our ultimate example is Jesus Christ and remember if you want to be like Jesus and you want to act like Jesus in any circumstances in any other worship just remember WWJD what will Jesus do what will Jesus do what will Jesus do in this circumstance and then meditating and memorizing God's word will help you to follow Jesus Jesus said if anyone will come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So we are here to follow Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our spiritual marathon. And the Apostle Paul also said, I urge you to imitate it. And he said to the church in Corinthians, follow my examples. I follow the example of Christ. To the Philippians, he said, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen me, put into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. So when you are imitating Christ, when you are imitating the apostles' life, the fathers of faith, then you will find out that their journey to follow Jesus is worthy. It's worthy to run. It's worthy to dedicate. And they are blessings that will follow you. Put on a new self in you, says the scripture. In Ephesians 4, 22 to 24, the Apostle Paul says, You were taught with regard of your former ways of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by his deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on a new self created by the by like created to be like God in the righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully. To his neighbor, for we are all members of one body. Putting off what is not God's like. And putting off what is Christ like. So in doing this, we have to evaluate what is good for me. What is not good for me. What is good for the church. What is not good for the church. What is good for the body of Christ. What is not good for the body of Christ. Because even though, sometimes people say, well, the pastor, what is permissible? How how far I can go that I cannot commit a sin? People ask questions. Is it okay to drink beer? Is it okay to smoke? Is it okay to, to uh, have a relationship before marriage? People ask this question not because they don't want, they don't, not because they want to stop sinning, but because they want to allow their behavior, their habits to sin be acceptable in the way that they can keep that bad habits and still be saved. When we are in Christ, we put out of our mind all this concept that we have from the all man life, the past, the person that we were before we know, knew about Christ. After we know about Christ and we renew our mind every day, reading the Bible, studying the Bible, meditating the Bible, do a quiet time, praying, God will give you new words, new insight, new way of thinking, new words to think. We have to put in practice that. When you put in practice that, you are putting on the new self. You're putting on righteousness. And God will help you. God will lift you out and will assist you to dress up in this way of life that is, in God's eyes, righteous. So, we are not talking about conditions to be saved because salvation is by faith, and it's through faith and it's by grace. But dedication, dedication to God, start from your physical body. If you smoke, if you drink, and you have sex out of the bondage of marriage, you are sinning against your own body because your body, after meeting Jesus, becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit. And if you want to dedicate to God this year, 2018, you have to dedicate from your body. And then, be transformed by the truth in your mind. Jesus says in John 8, 34, there, 35, Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And he also said in 14, 6, I am the way, and the truth, and the life, and the ones come to the Father except through me. You are listening to Jesus. You are listening to the truth. Now put this truth in your mind, so you can know Follow lies, and you will tell lies too. But if you listen to Jesus' words, and you listen to his words that are in truth and trustworthy, 
then you will tell only the truth. We are here this, this year, 2018, to have this marathon of faith. Because it's faith that overcomes the world. But where faith come from? Faith come from by hearing the message, the word of God. I invite you to come every Sunday here to receive faith. Increasing your faith. How? Renewing your mind by listening God's word every Sunday here. And every day in your home, when you read the Bible, when you meditate the Bible, when you study the Bible, we are offering you help. You cannot do it alone? Yes, we know that. That's why we are here, your church, to help you, to assist you, as members who need each other, as members who love each other, and mem as members who support each other to finish well this race that we have ahead, knowing that we are not perfect, but we go forward, press on to the calling, to this supreme high call that we have from our commander in chief in the universe, Christ, to be his people and to win this marathon of faith and all the battles that we have because it's our faith that overcomes the world and we become more than conquerors. Amen?